Hey everyone, welcome to part 11 of the Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we will polish our battle system by adding animations to it. So we will add a Pokemon enter animation, an attack animation, a hit animation, and a faint animation. So if you like the series, consider subscribing to this channel and leave a like on this video to help this channel grow. So let's start. So we can create the battle animations using Unity's animation tool, but then we'll have to create animated controllers and things like that, which we really don't need. So instead, I'm going to use a powerful tool called DoTween, which will let us create animations from inside the code itself. So first we'll install DoTween. So go to Windows and open the asset store. I'll just make it big. And search for DoTween. So we just need the free version, which is this one. And since I've already downloaded it, I will just have to import it into my project. I'll import everything. So once the installation is complete, it will show us a message that we need to go to DoTween's utility panel and set up DoTween. So let's open the utility panel by clicking on this button and in here it shows that do twin setup is required so let's click on this setup do twin button and wait for some time and finally just click apply so now do twin is installed in our project so let me close all this and I'll go to my battle unit script and we'll write all the code for the animations inside this script. So first let's cache a reference to the image because we'll be using this a lot. And I'll cache this inside the iBake function. And here instead of using this, I'll use my variable. So first let's create a public function that will play the battle enter animation. So for our battle animation, first we need to place the unit outside the canvas like this. So the exposition is around minus 500. And then we need to smoothly animate it into its original position. And similarly with the enemy unit, we'll place it here and then smoothly animate it into its original position. So first let's create a variable to store the original position of the image and in the awake function we will store the local position of the image inside this variable. The reason why we are using local position is because we want its position relative to the canvas not its actual position in the world. So now inside the player enter animation First, we need to place the sprite outside the canvas. So in the case of player unit, I'll set the local position of the image to minus 500. And for the Y, I'll just use the original position dot Y. And in case of the enemy unit, we'll make it positive 500. So let's call the enter animation from inside the setup function and if we test the game now you can't see the pokemons but if you look at the scene view you can see that they are outside the canvas so next we'll smoothly animate them into their original position so this is where do tween comes in so first i need to import dg dot tweening. This is the namespace for do tween, and I'll say image dot transform dot do. So you can see that we have lots of new functions inside our transform. So I'm looking for do move x. Actually, do local move x. 
since we want to update the local position. So for the first parameter, we want to pass the position of the X to which we want to bring the image. So in this case, we want to bring it back to its original position. So I'll pass that. So the next parameter takes the duration in which this training should be done. So let's say one second. So now if we test the game, you can see that uh, both our player and enemy Pokemon was animated smoothly into its original position. So I'm happy with the battle enter animation. So next let's do the attack animations. So next I'll create a public function for the attack animation. So in the case of the attack animation, we need to play two animations. So in the case of the player unit, first we need to move it towards the right and then move it back to its original position. So in Dootween, we can use a sequence to play multiple animations one by one. So in case of player unit, I'll move it a little towards the right. So for that I can use two local move X. And for the position, I'll say original position plus 50. And I want this to happen very fast. So for the duration, I'll say 0.25 second. Okay, I need to say original position dot X plus 50. So this will work. But instead of doing it like this, I will add this into our sequence so that we can play the second animation once this is complete. So I'll put this inside sequence.append just like this. And in the case of the enemy, I'll move it towards the left. So I just have to change plus 50 to minus 50. And after playing this animation, we should bring it back to the original position. So I'll bring it back to the original position in 0.25 seconds. So next we need to call this function from our player move and enemy move functions. So in the player move, after showing the dialog, I'll just call player unit dot play attack animation. And I'll just wait for a second before starting to reduce the HP. So next in the enemy move, we will call enemy unit dot play attack animation. So if we test the game now, and if I choose an attack, you can see that we play the attack animation and the enemy also does. So next let's create a public function for the hit animation. So when a Pokemon gets hit by an attack, we will just change its color really fast just to make it feel like it was hit. So in this case, we will have to tween the color. So first I'll store the original color of the image. All right. And inside the hit animation, we'll create a sequence. And to the sequence, first we'll append image dot do color. So this is the function used for tuning the color of the image. So let's change it to a color like gray. And we should do this really fast. So it should really look like it's blinking. So I'll set the duration as 0.1f. And after that, we will bring it back to the original color. So let's call this function in from our battle system. And we should call this just before a Pokemon takes damage. So when the player attacks, enemy should take the hit. So I'll call enemy unit dot play hit animation. And in the enemy move, 
we'll call play unit dot play hit animation so if we test this and if i choose an attack you can see that the enemy pokemon plays played the hit animation and right now even the player pokemon did so next we need to create faint animations so i'll create a public function for that so for the faint animation we need to move the unit down and fade its alpha to zero so i'll create a sequence for that first and first we'll move the unit down so for that we can use do local move y and for the end value we will pass original position minus 150 and let's say we want to do this in 0.5 seconds okay it's actually original position dot y minus 150 and when we are doing that we also need to fade its alpha to zero so it, it becomes invisible so for that i'll use sequence dot join so why are we using join instead of append so if we use append here then we will only start playing the fade animation once the first animation is complete so we don't want that we, do, we want both of them to play together so for that we'll use join so i'll say image dot and we have do fade in order to fade the image and i want to fade it to zero which means i want to make it invisible and we'll do that in 0.5 seconds so let's call this function from our battle system so inside the enemy move if the player pokemon fainted i'll call player unit dot play faint animation and inside the player move if the enemy pokemon fainted i'll call enemy unit dot play faint animation so let's test this okay so if i use a number the enemy pokemon should faint all right and it plays the faint animation so similarly when the player pokemon faints the faint animation will be played so we can make a lot of cool stuff using do tween we've only scratched the surface of it you should definitely go ahead and try more stuff inside do tween so with that we'll stop the video and in the next video we will look at how to start the battle when the player walks through the grass so if you think this video is helpful please consider subscribing to this channel and leave a like on this video that will really help me a lot. So, I'll see you in the next video.